From here starts the speaking test. This is the speaking mock test of the International English Language Testing System taking place in Rastayos Academy. The candidate is Sara Sheikh Mahbubi, candidate number 0143211. The examiner is Mehnu Shafi, examiner number 443533. Good evening, my name is Mehnu Shafi. Would you please tell me your full name? Good afternoon, sure. My name is Sara Sheikh Mahbubi. What can I call you? Sara. 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 Sure. Can I see your identification, please? Sure. Yeah, you are. Thank you very much. Great. So we can now get started with the first part of the exam. <coughs> I say it again. Yes. <coughs> now, okay. okay. So we can now get started with the first part of the exam. In the first part, I will ask you some personal questions. First, I'd like to ask about your family. How often do you visit your family? Um, I usually um, I usually visit my family two or three times uh, a week. Um, I have a, a three-year-old daughter, uh, but I really need to uh, see my family regularly in the week. Do you want to live with your family in the future? Uh, absolutely, yes. Uh, I hope. Uh, I hope that it uh, be true. Mm -hmm. Are you close to all of your family members? Mm, particularly, I am really close to my parents, uh, but uh, I uh, I like my siblings too. Okay, thank you very much. Now we can move on to the uh, next topic. Let's talk about school activity. Did you have many activities to do in your school? Mm, um, unfortunately, uh, I'm not a student, but uh, I have been studying on myself, by myself, uh, in home. Uh, I've been working. Um, but I used to, uh, I used to many activities uh, when I was a student um, at university or college. Can you mention a cherished uh, school activity that you have really enjoyed? Mm, yes, um, yes, I remember that. Um, if you ask me, I remember that. Um, many activities like uh, playing uh, many uh, playing uh, various um, various um, uh, kind of uh, sports in school uh, like zoo like uh, volleyball and uh, other sports uh, that uh, I really uh, like to do. What kind of extracurricular activities do schools offer in your country for a student? For students in my country, um, in my country, sorry, uh, can I repeat uh, the last question? Yes, please? I can repeat the question. What kind of extracurricular activities do schools offer in your country for a student? For students, um, unfortunately, uh, nowadays in my country, um, uh, the resources is very low and um, many people have um, very low income um, and um, the um, and the, the price of um, private school uh, is very high uh, mm -hmm. but it's uh, very different between private school and uh, public school thank you very much now let's move on to talk about memory do you have a good memory um, I, I think I'm not. No, I haven't. <laughs> Very good memory, unfortunately, but I try and I study a lot to improve my memory. How easy is it to improve one's memory? Mm. In my opinion, uh, it's a need to practice um, every day uh, and uh, memorize um, every, use, uh, 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 every useful subject as and and um, and uh, read uh, read uh, read them stories. Mm -hmm. And do you have an unforgettable childhood memory? Mm, yes, sure, but. 
bear with me while I think. Mm, I never uh, think about that before. Uh, yes, um, when uh, we go on a trip uh, with my family um, um, in summer, in summer season, uh, and uh, we played, uh, and uh, I and my brother, uh, my brother and I played a lot of um, water activity. Thank you uh, very much. Great. Now we can move on to the second part of the exam. So in the second part, I'm going to give you a card with a topic and you should talk about this topic for two minutes. Before you do that, you have one minute to think about what you're going to say. And you can make some notes to help you if you wish. Do you understand? Yes. Thanks. Perfect. So now I'm going to give you a piece of paper, your cue card and a pen so that you can make notes. Thank you. You're welcome. And in this part, you should describe an energetic person you know. Now you have one minute to think about this topic and your one minute starts now. Okay, now your one minute is over and you may talk about this topic for two minutes, but do not worry if I stop you. So your two minutes start now. I'm going to uh, talk about uh, one of my friends uh, that, uh, uh, that I uh, know her um, many times, for many times. Uh, she is one of my best friends and uh, she has a lot of uh, energy uh, and um, she is uh, she's very kind and um, humiliate and she is also generous. Um, um, I, I know her, I know her, uh, we, uh, we met each other when uh, we, are, uh, we were um, at school. Uh, and um, we are going uh, a lot of adventure with each other. Um, firstly, we are going to short. Uh, we are going on a short trip with her uh, regularly uh, in um, in um, in years, in many years. And uh, we uh, we experience a lot of uh, adven adventure uh, type of activities uh, like uh, mountain climbing um, and um, and camping uh, with her. Uh, she always has a lot of um, a lot of um, positive uh, energy, uh, and uh, she's encouraged me. To do, um, to do, and uh, to be uh, active, to be active, um, and um, what kind of? Uh, for example, uh, one of uh, our experience um, uh, by uh, my friend is um, going uh, mount uh, ice climbing. Uh, that is. Uh, very hard and uh, we had very... Thank uh, you very much. Now your two minutes is uh, over and we can move on to the third part. So if you can just uh, give me the paper. Oh, thank you. Okay then. In the second part, we've been talking about an energetic person you know, and now I would like to ask you some questions related to this topic. Do you think people doing laborious jobs are paid well? Mm, sorry, would you mind repeating that question? 
Do you think that people doing laborious jobs are paid well? Laborious job. Um, uh, in my point of view, um, in, in my country, um, there um, there are a lot of low income uh, people uh, that worked uh, more than eight hour uh, a day uh, and uh, have uh, a lot of uh, and um, have and they struggle a lot uh, to meet their ends meets. Um, but uh, yes, there uh, there. Uh, there is, uh, um, yes, there are a lot of uh, high income too um, in my country. And what kind of jobs require hard labor in your idea? Mm -hmm. I think, for example, um, veterinarian uh, and um, force worker, uh, worker and um, with, um, I mean that work with muscles. Mm -hmm. uh, it's so why work. do you think people engage in such activities or these jobs? Mm, I think uh, that not have any choices uh, to do uh, in this situation in uh, that time uh, and uh, they have to uh, work uh, very hard um, with uh, low wages. And do you think that this situation is the same in all countries? Uh, um, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Um, uh, we, uh, I live in a third uh, level country in the world. And um, for sure, uh, many uh, advanced uh, economic have, uh, has better uh, jobs to do uh, and uh, there has a lot of uh, best opportunity to do, uh, to work with. And do you think that a teacher's job is also difficult? Yes, definitely. Uh, in my view, uh, teachers um, work very hard um, because they, they, um, they face uh, many problems uh, with the new generation. New generation uh, have an uh, aggressive uh, attri uh, attribu uh, attitude uh, to, mm, to behave uh, in front of uh, other people. Thank and you very much. Great. Now this is the end of the speaking test. Thank you. You're welcome. Now you can just relax and take a breath and I'll take a few minutes to add up your score and then I'll give you the feedback. Thank okay? you very much. You're Thank welcome. you. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so now let's get started with the feedback part. Uh, as you may know, there are four criteria in IELTS speaking based on which your performance will be evaluated. And the first one is your fluency and coherence. Let's get started with that. Uh, in your fluency and coherence, I can say that um, you, you are able to talk and the good thing is that whenever you run out of ideas, you know how to use fillers and boosters to just buy yourself some time in order to maintain your uh, flow of speech. However, the thing is that uh, you need to work on your pauses because you have so many hesitations, so many pauses. And when you have many pauses, you cannot maintain a good rhythm. So um, you, sh you should avoid these pauses or self-repetition or self-correction. Like you say something and then you just correct yourself, you just go back, you don't finish one sentence in order to start the next sentence. So um, you should avoid your hesitations, your self-repetition and self-correction by working a bit on your grammar. Because the thing is that you're not sure about what a structure to use or what vocabulary to use. Like you're using some structures, some phrases or some words that you use, but you, you're not 100% sure about them. Like it, it can be, I can see it, I can feel it that you use it, but you're maybe you're, in your mind you're thinking about the other correct, <laughs> the other words are correct form of it. So just try to use whatever you are 100% sure about mm -hmm. or try to practice and work more on your grammar or on your vocabulary so that you can use them uh, correctly. And uh, this, this can help you with your pauses and also one, whenever you feel like you don't know what to say or you run out of ideas, which is totally normal, you can fake your answer. I mean, you can lie. For example, you're talking about an art gallery that you attended. Maybe you can just talk about it for one sentence. 
if it's part one or three. Uh, in that case, if you need to explain more, then you can just talk not, not only about your experience, but about something that you saw on TV. Some information that you have about it, you can just oh. fake your answer. Or you talk about somebody else's experience as your experience, right? You can fake your answer because nobody knows what's going on on your mind, right? So you can lie, but as long as your answer is related to the question, you are good to go. Other than that, uh, regarding your fluency and coherence, you need to use more connectives and discourse markers, especially the connectives. Because if you just use and, so, but, because, you cannot get a high score. So instead, try to use some better alternatives for those words. For example, instead of and, you can use in addition, moreover, besides. Or instead of but, you can use however. Instead of because, you can use as or since or many other connectives that you can use. But just use the ones that you are able to apply correctly, the ones that you can use naturally. Because if you sound uh, like you, you have memorized some words or sentences, then it will mark you down. And uh, your, your topic development is good. You have problems with the definition of some words, for example, laborious jobs, labor, when you, you know, when it includes, uh -huh. but uh, the good thing is that you didn't stop, you didn't say, I don't know, and you gave an answer. Mm -hmm. That's really good. That's brilliant because this way, maybe your answer, maybe your answer is correct, right? Okay, um, because of all the things I mentioned, um, you got a five today in your fluency and coherence. And now to move on to your lexical resource, which is your vocabulary, the next criteria. In your vocabulary, you were able to talk about different topics, as I mentioned before, even the topics that you had no idea what to say about. But uh, your vocabulary range was very limited, or the ones you used were not all correct. For example, you said humili humiliate, maybe you wanted to say uh, humble, a humble person, or low-income people, uh, for example, you say it's a low-income job. job. Or meet the ends meet, I guess you said, to make the ends yes. meet. Yes. Um, so just use the words or structures that you are sure about. First, try to be error-free, then add more vocabulary and collocations to your speaking. And other than that, uh, a better paraphrasing is what you need. Because uh, when the examiner asks you a question, this is really good that you use fillers and boosters to buy yourself some time and then develop the topic. But the thing is that you can still paraphrase better. Like I say, um, for example, do you enjoy uh, going out with your friends? You can say, uh, I, I have a very, I have a great time hanging out with my friends. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or I do love spending time with my friends. Yes. So you can use direct, again, direct synonyms to paraphrase the examiner's question or your own sentences. This is about your vocabulary and now your grammar. Um, I can say your grammar has had some negative impacts on the other criteria as well uh, because you made so many minor grammatical mistakes. Now, for example, you are using very good tenses, like present perfect continuous, used to or future tenses, present continuous, but you were not using them all correctly. For example, you said, I used to school activity. I used to do or I used to engage in a verb you need here. So if you're using a range of tenses, which is very good, try to use them correctly. Or other mistakes, uh, like you said, uh, no, I'm not but you should have said, no, I don't, the answer to one of the questions. Or uh, mm, one of my friend, which was one of my friends, uh, many problem, many problems. Uh, one of our experience, one of, one of our experience says, uh, mm -hmm. or for many times, no, for a long time. So be very careful with your mistakes because you are almost making mistakes in all your sentences. Even, even if you were using some complex structures like conditional sentences or subordinate clauses. Just like your vocabulary, first try to be error-free, then add a better variety of words or structures to that. And um, so because of all the things I mentioned, in your vocabulary and in your grammar, grammar you got uh, five, you got a five, just like your fluency and coherence. And finally, in your pronunciation, 
in this criteria, you, uh, I can say that your pace of the speech is fine. You're not speaking very fast or very slowly. But uh, you had some mispronunciations. And because of the pauses, uh, you couldn't maintain a good rhythm, a good intonation. You need to raise and lower your voice. You shouldn't sound flat when you were speaking to the examiner. And your speaking was a bit flat. Um, so, you, you, uh, just to talk about your mispronunciations, for example, the word particularly, adventure, activity, you know, your word stress was not right, or advanced, aggressive, right? So, be very careful with, your, with how you pronounce the words. When you avoid the pauses or when you reduce your pauses, you can have a better pronunciation and give a better intonation to your speaking. You can do that by working on your listening every day. It's not a, uh, something you can do in a week or in a few days. Work on your listening every day. It can be 15 minutes a day, but try to watch movies. Try to listen to anything in English. If you don't have the chance to talk to native speakers, then try to watch movies or listen to music or uh, you'd better listen to English podcasts and repeat after some sentences because this shadowing technique can help, help you a lot with your intonation. So, uh, you got another five in your pronunciation, and now to wrap up, you got a five in your fluency and coherence. You need to use more connectives, reduce your pauses, and uh, use more complex structures because you would, be, you, you would sound more fluent when you use more structures. In your vocabulary, you got another five. Try to use more words correctly and then paraphrase better. In your grammar, this is an area that you should really work on because this is something related to your own language. And if you work on it, you can really mark up, right? And finally, in your pronunciation, you got another five. Try to keep working on it every day, your intonation and your pronunciation. So your overall band score today would be a five. Now, if you have any questions or doubts, then you can ask me your questions. Thanks you a lot. You're welcome. For having me. <laughs> You're welcome. My pleasure. Then Thank you. If you have no questions, I wish you best of luck. Thank you very much. Thank You're you. You're welcome. <laughs> Do you want to know what band score you'll get in the IELTS speaking test? Perhaps you want to improve your performance and prepare yourself for the real test? Then why not book an online mock test with us that will last for 25 minutes? 12 minutes of the test itself and 13 minutes of comprehensive feedback plus will give you useful tips on how to make your performance better. Remember, all our examiners are especially trained by British Council instructors. So, we know how to help you. Join us.